Jojo, who are you? I'm a child of God. What does it mean to be a child of God? I belong to God who loves me. How do you thank God for this gift of love? I promise to love and trust God with all my heart. Today, the children and youth will lead us in worship. Let's worship God! We bring our joy, our wonder, and our love to God. We give thanks for a new day and for God's Son, Jesus. Let us worship God! what God has created. What did God create? God created all that is seen and unseen. Let us pray. God of infinite wisdom, you have been faithful to your people throughout times. Calm our minds. Open our ears and our hearts this day that we might still hear of your faithfulness. Amen. What did God do to help us? God chose the people of Israel to make a new beginning. They received God's covenant and prepared the way for Jesus to come as our Savior. What is a covenant? The covenant is an everlasting agreement between God and Israel. Friends, if we say we have no sin, we are lying to ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, the Messiah promises to forgive us, cleanse us, and remember our sins no more. With humility and integrity, let us approach the throne of grace together. Let us pray. 
Forgiving God, we thank, we give you thanks for your unconditional love and ask that you enable us to love each other unconditionally too. Forgive us for not always answering when others ask, who do you say that I am? Forgive us for ignoring those in our midst who are different from ourselves in age, race, gender, sexual orientation, education level, and economic status. Forgive us for the times we are so easily conformed to the, to the language and actions of this world. Forgive us for taking the easy way out with texts, emails, or Facebook instead of confronting each other face to face. Forgive us, God, and make us whole again. In the name of the one who came to save us, we pray. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Let us now share signs of peace with one another by making peace signs with our hands and saying, Peace of Christ be with you. And also and with, with you. you. A reading from Psalm 116. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious is the sight of the Lord, is the death of his faithful ones. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your serving girl. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the court of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. Feed me.
Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 13 through 35. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. On the road to Emmaus, now that the same day two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, they were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened these days? What things, he asked, about Jesus of Nazareth. They replied he was a, a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sent to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more is that the third day since all this took place, in addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but did not find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who had said he was alive. And some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, how foolish you are and how slow to believe all the things a prophet has spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, stay with us for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he talked to us on the road and opened the, the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two t told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When I think of magic, I think of optical illusions, card tricks, and bunnies getting pulled out of hats. Magic, according to Wikipedia, is a concept comparable to religion and science, something we can believe in, but also something that is sometimes hard to justify. I think that miracles nowadays are very comparable to magic, but magic always has a catch. Magic is called misdirection, too, as if you're only looking in the wrong direction to see what's right in front of your face. As soon as the disciples recognize Jesus, he disappears. To me, that seems like a magic trick. Somehow, Jesus knew when the disciples would realize who he was and disappeared into thin air. I think I'd question my sanity and go to the doctor if I were there. I can't imagine being so close to Jesus either, especially knowing that he, the Son of God, was standing right next to me and I didn't even realize it. I wonder if afterward the disciples wished they had realized who he was and asked him a million questions. I think that's also part of the magic that they didn't realize who he was. The youth group talked on Sunday about this passage and we contemplated who was keeping the disciples' eyes shut. Was Jesus keeping their eyes shut? Maybe he was so that he could get his point across and not be bombarded like a celebrity. Or maybe the disciples couldn't fathom the idea that Jesus came, could come back from the dead so they had their eyes shut themselves. Maybe they shut their eyes to the idea that God is everlasting, gave up hope, and forgot all that Jesus had taught them. Can you imagine the regret they would have felt once Jesus was gone and how they would have clung to every word they could remember that Jesus said to them? 
I think that when I read this passage, it's a reminder that I have to cherish the people around me because they are so much more important than I know. I think this message can be very valuable because for all I know, I have all the time in the world in quarantine. Hearing about all the awfulness happening right now is terrible and I wish I could have seen my friends again before this happened. That being said, there's also a ton of miracles happening at the same time, but it all seems so far away from the bad. I don't feel like I hear enough of the miracles to balance out all of the bad. It's enough to make me wonder, where is God? Is he with the COVID-19 patients? Is he on another continent? Because I don't feel him here with me. Every day looks the same, so God... So seeing God in every moment is so hard because it all looks the same. But what if, like the disciples, my eyes are shut? Maybe I'm so convinced that God isn't with me that I've stopped looking. Or maybe he's in a place I've never recognized before. Maybe he's with me as a family member. Or maybe my teachers who are just as confused as I am, which means something is definitely wrong. Maybe he's in a phrase I hear on TV that reminds me of a Bible verse I know. Or what if he's waiting on me to call on him to calm my anxieties and bring me peace? But I do know that at the end of this passage, the disciples rejoiced and were happy that the most wonderful magic trick of all time wasn't actually a trick. So I think that means we should all be happy too and rejoice during this time that we have together. Amen. The Road to Emmaus is a story often told in Sunday school or godly play for the main reason that it's the story of Jesus' return. We often talk about the point of recognition for the disciples when Jesus breaks the bread and they can see that it's the Messiah with them. Sometimes we talk about how Jesus describes himself to his followers or the way that he must follow the gospel for what he should do next. Today though, I'm focusing on what's happening the whole time Jesus' followers are blinded or stopped from recognizing him. As we all know from the scripture, the men on the road's eyes are stopped from recognizing Jesus. Their eyes are kept from seeing Jesus for the majority of the story. And they can only truly see again after Jesus breaks the bread he is given at the men's lodging. At the moment of recognition, something important happens. Jesus vanishes and the two men turn to each other. They say, were our hearts not burning within us while he was talking to us on the road? While he was opening the scriptures with us? The hearts were burning within all along yet it was their eyes that were closed and opened. After looking into it a little closer, the word hearts might not give justice to the depth of the original text. Luke wrote the stories of Jesus in Greek, and after doing some translating, I learned that the word from the scriptures is cardia, meaning heart or core. With this simple definition, we can learn that Luke wanted to convey that the men felt something stirring deep within themselves while talking to a supposed stranger. The reason this is important is because earlier I mentioned how it was only their eyes that could be stopped from seeing the Lord. But it seems to me that their heart, or their soul, could never stop feeling the Lord. This to me shows the relationship between worldly things and godly things. Our eyes can represent earthly and empirical things. They are the way that we see the world around us, all the good, but also all the bad that might drag us away from God. Our souls, or our hearts, to stay true to the scripture, is closest to God. It is what makes us us, and therefore children of God. This is what couldn't be stopped from feeling Jesus, and what can't be blinded from the presence of God. The men's eyes were stopped from seeing a pretty recognizable man at the time, as some pictures given to us from more modern sources make us feel like Jesus looks something like this, with pale skin and light blue eyes, and at a time where everyone else looked like you would expect someone from the Middle East to look. But on a more true note, This was also someone that they had followed and devoted their lives to, and spent a lot of their time with. It was for this reason that I always was a little surprised that the men didn't recognize their savior. Some reviews of the scriptures suggest that they were bad followers, or just bad Christians for not recognizing the Messiah. However, it was merely their eyes they didn't recognize, and their hearts stayed true to Jesus all along. The fact that the men's hearts were burning the whole time while the Messiah was with them shows the power of what is godly over what is earthly. If we look back at what the eyes and the heart might represent, this scripture shows us that the earthly world, or the eyes, can be blinded from God, but that what is godly, or the heart, can always be connected to God. This idea supports God's presence with us, so that whether we know it through our eyes or not, God will always be with us in our core. 
Thank you all so much for being here with me today. I am so excited that we have come together and that we are discussing our scripture. We know that when we are preaching, there are so many different ways that we can respond to God's word in our lives. And one of those is uh, having a discussion with one another. So I have asked our Club 45 members today to talk about some of their reflections on our text. And so my first question to them was, what was a word or a phrase that stuck out to you from our passage today? And so when you are ready for your answer, you can wave at the screen or you can put your hand up or I will call on you. All right, Charlie, what was a word or phrase from today's scripture that stuck out to you? Um, I would say drink this cup. Drink this cup? Because it would... It would, uh, rem it would, you will remember of Jesus's blood. Because you're a member of Jesus. For him dying for us. Thank you. All right, Zion, do you have an answer to our question? Break this bread. Break this bread when they are breaking the bread. Libby? A word that stood out to me was astonished astonished when they're astonished. We're going to talk about that word in just a second. Josie, what was a word or phrase that stuck out to you? Oh no, you're not muted. You're muted. The word feast, because they're together. Because they're together. We can, yeah. you know, we can share a feast when we're together with friends also. Um, so I asked everybody a few minutes ago, and I hope that uh, you will share some of your reflections, and that is, when is a time in your life that you were astonished or that you were surprised? All right, Josie. Um, one time I was surprised was when I was uh, having voice lessons. And I kind of like thought I had a like low range that where like I can only sing deep and a little bit high. So John Thomas was helping me try to expand to get out to the higher range. So um, I was singing really, really high and it was kind of out of my comfort zone, but I kept on going, kept on going. And I hit this one note and it really surprised me because I hit it really well. And yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And kind of similar in our scripture today, the disciples are um, maybe they're learning something new also. And so um, they kind of have met Jesus and they've been surprised by this moment. So thank you. Thank you for sharing that. All right, Charlie, when was the time in your life that you were surprised or astonished by something? Um, I would say when we first got our puppy and we, oh, yeah, you have to tell us your puppy's name. Lola. Um, Lola. we were at the, um, haircut store and, um, uh, as we were, look, as my mom was looking on Facebook, she saw, uh, Lola on a couch for a picture and we found out on there that she was allergic to a family member there. And so I pretty much begged her so much that she decided to get Thomas, my brother, and tried to get my dad to go to go get her all the way in Cleveland at Walmart. And my dad never came, but my brother did. And when you met Lola, was there like surprise or shock or excitement? Was that experience really exciting for you? Yes, because I was amazed of how old she was and how small she was, because she was adorable. <laughs> Thank you. I love that story. I also love, it, kind of similar also, is that when Jesus walks away, you know, the disciples have kind of a similar moment of excitement, and they, um, too, kind of feel that same um, feeling of um, excitement and uh, grateful. It's, they're grateful for what they have learned to, on this walk to Emmaus. All right, Zion. Oh, and your uh, profile picture is your puppy, right? You were telling us that earlier in the Zoom call. There she is. There's Lola. So thank you. <laughs> 
Uh, Zion, do you have an answer to our question for today? Was there a time recently in your life where you were um, surprised or astonished by something? Oh, we can't hear you. <laughs> Me. There you are. Um, this morning, ironically, because this morning I've been asking for donuts for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. And, weeks. <laughs> and then this morning we just happened to get donuts, which um, I love donuts. Well, thank you. Yeah. That is, um, and kind of talking also about, we're kind of reminded that the, um, that the disciples break bread with one another and uh, that when we share a meal with our friends or with our family, that we can remember that also um, that Jesus is with us. So thank you. All right, Libby. Whenever I came home one day to a brand new house, I knew nothing about. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, we have Connor has joined us again. He's connecting to audio. We'll give him a second and then we'll ask him some of the same questions. Hello, Connor. We are recording and for um, our scripture section and I'm gonna ask you, hello. Wait, yay, welcome back. Thank you. I'm so glad you're here. We are recording our section for um, everyone, for the congregation, and this is how we're going to kind of do our sermons this year. So we're going to respond to God's word by interviewing one another, like we talked about. So my question for the other uh, group members, and now for you, is what was a time in your life that you were surprised by something? Are you there? Hello, Connor. What was the time that you were, oh no, now you're muted. Uh, there, okay. <laughs> Thank you for being here. We're so glad you're here. So when was a time in your life that you were surprised by something or astonished is the word that we're using? I, um, so one time this se last season I was playing baseball and I started, batting like close close to the end of the lineup and playing in the outfield and at the end of the season I ended up batting second and playing at second base so that was fun very cool thank you thank you for sharing all right this is my last question for everyone and we have read our text together and we have reflected on it with one another. And so my question is, what do you think that this text teaches us about today, a message for today that we can carry with us in our week ahead or months ahead? Uh, and so Zion, I know you had a really great observation earlier and I hope that you will share it again with us. So I'm gonna unmute you. Um, like, Mm, um, <laughs> it's okay. Um, so I noticed that the whole time they were like talking to God and they were talking to God about God and how they were just surprised he wasn't there. Uh huh. So I thought maybe you should just pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> that you should pay attention and that God can show up in your life also. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, uh, Josie, how, uh, what is this text teaching us um, today that we can carry with us for the week or month ahead? Uh, to not dread surprises because sometimes surprises can be really awesome things. Thank you. Libby? Um, I feel like it's saying that everything is possible and you have to believe in other people. Mm, believing in other people, the importance of the disciples being in a group. Thank you. Uh, Charlie. Whenever you see homeless, at least try to help them and give them food for those <laughs> Bible. Helping one another, yes. 
Uh, Connor, do you have anything that from this text that we've read today that we can carry with us to the week or the month ahead? No. No. <laughs> That's okay. All right. Well, thank you so much, friends, for being here with us today. Uh, we're so excited to share our messages with uh, you all, the congregation. And again, this is our Club 45 fourth and fifth graders. We've been gathering on Zoom when we can. Yes, I see the hand clapping emojis so we can <laughs> give a hand clapping. And uh, <laughs> thanks to God that we can be together uh, with one another even when we are apart. And that we can respond to God's word in so many different ways. And that is such a good and gracious gift. All right, so say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. That's so nice. <laughs> Goodbye. <Yeah>. Ow. <laughs> Why do we pray to God? Because we were created to live with God who desires the prayers of our hearts. Our hearts long for God, for we need God's help and guidance through the day. What do we do when we pray? When we pray, we adore God, when we confess our sins, we give God thanks, and we pray for the needs and of others, others and ourselves. How did Jesus teach his followers to pray? Um, they taught to Prayer. He taught them the words of the Lord's Prayer. He taught them the word, Lord Prayer. We now come to that part of the service where we return a portion of our tithes and offerings to God. During our offertory today, we will enjoy the musical talents of Josie Julian and Fields Thomas singing a Cross Currents hymn favorite, Amazing grace my chains are gone as well as the liturgical dance talents of the giles family your continued generosity and support of the ministries at rivermont makes programs like this children and youth sabbath as well as worship any worship service from our homes possible and the ministries of reaching out and being connected to one another, even though we are far apart. There are a few different ways to give. You can log on to our website, rivermontpc.org slash give. And there is a PayPal e-giving and text to give links. As well as you can mail your checks in to our physical address at 3319 Hickson Pike. For myself, I am so grateful for Rivermont during this time, reaching out to myself and to others, um, and that we have stayed connected even though we are, are apart. It has really meant a lot to me. So thank you. Let us now continue to worship God with one another.
Loving God, I pray that in this seemingly infinite quarantine, we learn that family is a way for us to see you. I pray that we learn the importance and love that comes from our families and you. I pray for the healthcare workers and their safety and their family safety. We are thankful that we are given more time to focus on you, even in the midst of all this chaos. We thank you for the outdoors. I pray for the nursing home workers and the patients, and I pray for their safety and their families. I am grateful for food during this time, and I pray for the people without it. We are thankful for our communities given to us through the church and their role in our lives. I pray for the continued patience of both teachers and students who are so confused by what is going on right now. We pray for those affected by the tornado a couple weeks ago, that you reach out to them and let them know that they are not alone in this time of grief. Pray for the people that are so sick and the people who fear that they might never see their loved ones again. We pray for the leaders and we pray that they let wisdom come upon them. I pray for the healthcare workers and their safety and their family safety. We pray that our church family holds strong during times of fear and loneliness and for their losses in this hard time. We pray for the employees and the first responders working on the front line during this pandemic, that they will stay safe. We pray for the elderly who are vulnerable during this crisis. I pray for the nursing home workers and the patients. I pray for their safety and families. We pray for those who are lonely. I pray that you reassure those who don't feel safe in their homes and give them hope that they are safe in you. We pray that you grant us wisdom and patience in this time of fear and uncertainty. God, please be, please be, please be with us during, during this time where we feel alone. I pray that we see you in our long days and that you make yourself known to us. We pray that your presence may be continued to be felt through our church family, and to all those around the world who need it, whether knowingly or not. Thank you, God, for loving us no matter what we do. Saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. How do we know this good news? Through reading the Bible and hearing it taught and preached, the Holy Spirit inspired those who wrote the Bible and helps us rely on promises today. What else does the Holy Spirit do for the church? The Spirit gathers us to worship God, builds us up in faith, hope, and love, and sends us into the world of pro claim the gospel and to work for justice and peace. Why do Christians gather for worship on the first day of the week? Because it is the day when, when God raised our Lord Jesus from the dead. When we gather weekly on that day, the Spirit makes our heart glad with the memory of Jesus' resurrection. 
What were the results of Pentecost? The Holy Spirit filled the first Christians with joy by revealing what Jesus had done for us. The Spirit inspired them to understand and proclaim the gospel and to live a life together in thanksgiving to God. Was Jesus just another human being? No, although he was truly human, he was also God with us. As someone who was truly human, he could share all our sorrows. Yet, because he was truly God, he could save us from all our sins. Why are you baptized? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Because of the command Jesus gave to his disciples. After he was raised from the dead, he appeared to them, saying, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Matthew 28, 19. What is the meaning of this name? It is the name of the Holy Trinity, and the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God. And yet, they are not three gods, but one God in three persons. We worship God in this mystery. Thank you to all our participants, our children, and our youth for your contributions. This church family values you, your wisdom, and the witness you bear to your relationship with Jesus Christ. For these gifts and many more, we give you thanks. Immediately following the service, I invite you all to stick around right here on Zoom for a time of fellowship as we take time to catch up with one another, share our love and support for each other, and give thanks for this community. As we go forth from this place, let us imagine what it would feel like to find Jesus so immediately in our presence. May our eyes, our heart, our very core be open to the presence of God with us in this very moment. So may the light of God surround you, the love of God enfold you, the power of God protect you, and the presence of God watch over you so that you may know that wherever you are, God is. Go in peace.